Hi, this is Mitch Mitchell, and I'm just sharing. You know, how come every one of these videos I start, it sounds like I'm yelling at people. Anyway, my conversation today is going to center around information and bad information that sometimes people give to you. And I'm going to give you an example. You know, for the first time since I've been married, my wife and I actually got refunds this year. Never happened before. We've never gotten a refund check since we've been married. You know, everyone talks about this marriage penalty, and it, it hit us until this year. So, got the first check, because my wife now is a traveling uh, worker. So, she got a first check from another state, which is very interesting, by the way. And both of our names were on it, and I went to deposit the check, and they wouldn't allow it. I said, well, wait, I've signed it. My name is on the bank account. What's the deal? And they said that because both of our names were on the checks, that she also had to sign it. Now, I was irked by this because that meant I had to send the check out of town. So I said, why? You know, I've never heard such a thing. You know, both of our names on. And they said, well, it's a federal law. Well, you know, I'm not one of those people who just because you told me something means I believe it. But still, I took the check. I mailed it to my wife. Then I started doing some research, and I found out there is no such federal law, and there's no such state law. So, yesterday, I go back to the bank, I got her check back to sign, and I got a second check. So, I decided to stop at the desk there, and I said, yes, I was here last week, and tried to deposit a check, and they told me this thing, that I couldn't deposit a check unless both our signatures were on the check, but they also told me it was federal law, and I happen to know that's not true. And it's not state law either. And so I'd like to see some proof that this is true. So she said, well, I think it is, but let me look. It just may be bank policy. So she starts looking and she can't find anything. Meanwhile, another representative finally comes over. And they're both telling me this thing. I said, okay, but I need to see it. You know, now I'm at this point where I just, I need to see it. I don't trust what I'm being told because last week I was told it was a law. Turns out it's not a law. So, they go on a scrounge, and it takes about 10 minutes, but they finally find this thing, and I'm just going to read this real quick, this one little line here, which basically says, and this is bank policy, by the way, uh, signatures on a refund check, it says an actual signature is required of all payees, that one line, so because there's two names on the check, and it's a refund check, they need both of our signatures. Now, it doesn't apply to anything else. So if for whatever reason, say that you sold a car and it was in both names and someone wrote a check for it, even one of you can take it to the bank just with one signature and deposit it. And it means nothing because it's not a refund check. I don't know why they feel so strong about these checks from the government, whether it's state or federal, but they do. Now, the real point here is that I was given wrong information. Not necessarily that they couldn't do it, but that it was a law. And I didn't quite accept it, obviously, because I came home and researched it, but I was irked. Because when I was a director in the hospital and I had people under me, I used to tell them, do not tell any patient or family member or whomever, whoever the person is responsible for the bill, anything that is not the truth that you can't confirm, because that's the kind of thing that comes back on us, and the person they're going to want to talk to afterwards is me. And I didn't want that because then it made it look like I'm teaching people how to be liars. So luckily for them, this is my wife's bank rather than my bank since I was trying to deposit it into a joint account that she started. Because had it been my bank, I'd be pulling my money and going elsewhere. Because your people don't know what you're talking about, you know. And that happens often. You know, we get information all the time from people and they tell us these things. And quite often we don't question it. And we need to question the information and we need to make people prove to us that they're telling the truth uh, on a lot of things. Sometimes it doesn't really matter, but on a lot of other things, we just need to do that. We deserve people telling us the truth. That's all this one is. And video number two. Let's see what we come up with next. Take care.